Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to go over a special new creation that I put together to assist everyone because it's very difficult to find lots of good information dealing with this topic, which is the redesign of assignments and assessments in the age of AI. So here in academia, we have lots of different traditional assignments that have existed for quite a while here, but they're no longer as effective because now we have AI. So now a student could easily use AI to address a lot of these assignments. So we need to think about what we can do to enhance them or to modify them so that they're a bit more, I don't want to use the word resistant to AI, but so that they're improved and that they should have been improved to begin with even before AI. But this sort of gives us a technique to go through and adjust our assignments so that they're overall better regardless of AI. So I'm gonna go through this uh, technique. The technique is simply called SHARE, the SHARE technique. And it's just an acronym to help us address these different aspects of assignments and assessments. The overall technique is called SHARE, of course. So this is broken up into five different sections. The first section is S, which stands for the strong and more authentic. So here, what we're doing is we're adding rigor, realism, grounding. The idea here is that we do things like authentic writing. What does that mean? That means that instead of simply going with the traditional essay, we need to think about it a bit more to make it more realistic, to make it more uh, applicable to that student, to the topic itself. So let's say if I'm in business, I wouldn't necessarily have my students write an essay. I could have them write a scientific report. I could make them uh, create a research article, a research journal article, something that's more in line with the topic itself. So again, here we have you know the essay versus a report versus a blog versus an article versus a case study versus other. Again, depending in your specific field. The other aspect to this is grounding. So by that, I mean that we could do so much more in class by having examples that are very specific to the topic, but also original from the instructor within that class. So now we have in-class examples. We have guest lectures, guest speakers that come in and talk about the topic, special events that are held within the class, original case studies, original handouts. Now that we have all this original content, that is actually within the course. Now, when we give them an assignment, some sort of writing assignment, we can tell them specifically, hey, you have to use some of this content that was done in class. So like those lectures or like the, the in-class examples, the, the special uh, handouts that were done, the special uh, case study, you have to use that for your actual writing that becomes much more difficult for an AI system like ChatGPT to use because again, it's not part of what they were trained on. Now sure, a student could feed that in, but still going through that process and having to ensure that content from here is part of the overall writing, that is going to force them to now take more interest and take a, you know, be more specific in the actual information being used, which will force them to then process that information from the class or the overall final topic that is written about. So again, those are key things to, to really look at and incorporate, making it stronger, making it more authentic, as well as the grounding aspect. And the more that we can do for realism, the more that we can make it more realistic, more pertinent to what they're going to be doing after they graduate in that topic is going to really enhance their ability to learn the information. They're gonna, it's gonna motivate them a bit more and it's gonna help with that long-term retention of the information. The next part here is the letter H in SHARE. This stands for high price for false information. So here it's specific in that we tell the students, hey, they, there is going to be more points, much more points taken off for illogical made up information, hallucinations, that's the term uh, for an AI making up information. So that means that you tell them ahead of time and you put that also within the rubric. You specifically tell them, hey, if there are made up quotes, if there are made up facts, you know, incorrect uh, citations and incorrect references, all that is going to be, it, points will be taken away, much more points than they were in the past, right? 
traditionally, I think there might have been like some slight points taken off or it might just viewed as, oh, that was a simple mistake. No, now since we know that this is a problem that could occur in AI, hallucinations, and now if they are using AI to create, the, this is even more important that they go through and verify the information. It can't be the case where we allow that, oh, it was the AI's fault. Nope. The AI might create something. The AI might be used to help put together something. But in the end, it's the author. It's the person that is going through the information and handing it in. That's the person who's held accountable. So now we need to ensure that and hold them accountable even more by saying, hey, there's going to be a high price to pay if there's anything wrong. So that will then help to force the student to go through and verify, oh, okay, my citations, I need to ensure that they are real. I need to ensure that that's incorporated, that's listed correctly, so that my references, my quotes, those are all real and correct. Uh, the way I've seen some instructors do it is uh, they'll say, hey, in your citations, you have to have a link. It's not just the case of, um, you know, having the name of the article or the, the name of the publisher. No, it needs to be specific with a link so that I can go through and verify to ensure 100% that this is a true and correct and not hallucinated citation. So again, the more that we do that, the more that we hold them accountable, the better. Um, and it's going to enhance the overall assignment and assessment in the age of AI. And again, make sure that this is also put in the rubric as to why we're doing this. We're doing this in order to ensure that there's attention to detail, in order to ensure that there's credibility of the document, credibility of the author. We're doing it to ensure that there's consistency, that there's flow, proper flow, because it's not made up incorrect information. And then most importantly, we're doing it to ensure that the student is displaying an understanding of the topic and understanding of the information. Because if they're putting in wrong information, incorrect, made up stuff, then they don't understand the topic, right? So that's the key part. And this is a great important part of this overall redesign of the assignment and the assessment. The next one is A for additional and or other assessment techniques. So here we're talking about other things that can be done to assist in the overall assessment, right? The overall assignment, what can be done? Well, we have to think, is the essay, is that the best way to address this SLO, this student learning outcome? Uh, again, assessments, uh, you know, using a written assessment is something that's very typical and it's done a lot, but we have to ask ourselves, Am I doing this just because it's always been done that way? Or is this the best way to address this SLO? It might very well be. Okay, now we need to think in the age of AI, is that enough? Do we need to modify it? Do we need to add something to it? That's a very possibility, right? So we can do different things because there's lots of different types of assessments that we should be considering. Uh, one of the big ones that come to mind would be a presentation. So this is an oral aspect to it. Again, this could replace the written assignment or it could be done in addition to. Maybe the essay is shorter and we also have this oral presentation that goes along with it. Maybe there's going to be a Q&A section where now the student has to come up, simply say what they wrote about, not give a whole presentation because maybe the students were able to read it also, but now there's a Q&A section. So now that student has to have that information that they wrote about within their minds in order to be able to properly answer. So this makes it that much more of a motivation for the student to actually do the work so that they know the content so that they can answer those questions. So again, you see how we're putting things together to help address this idea of a student just using AI. No, we, maybe we do want to incorporate some use of AI, but we still want them to ensure to learn the content, to understand the content as they go through this process. Other possibilities are there could be visual works where the student creates some sort of artworks and then they have to present that and then talk about it to explain what this means and how this correlates with the topic that was supposed to be learned. Other possibilities here include student video, student created video, student created podcasts where they create the content and then they're, they're talking about it. Um, other things would be in-class writing, in-class quizzes, all possibilities that could be used in conjunction with another type of assessment or uh, on its own as this is going to be the assessment that we're doing instead of this essay. So again, it's up to you. You need to think about, well, what would work best for this SLO? So that's an important thing uh, to keep in mind. And again, a big one would be group projects. 
group projects are great because if we do something like project-based learning, now they could use AI to help create some contents, but they still have to go through the process of working together, putting it all together, uh, having different pieces, creating maybe a presentation that goes along with it, having an oral presentation where they answer questions. So again, this bigger type of project might help with addressing the overall issue. The other big thing with this is it's important that if we do something like this, this assessment where we modify it, now we're adjusting it, maybe adding a component, we need to be sure that we're also addressing this within the rubric. So the rubric now has to be clear on what's expected. Additionally, even things like, can they use AI? If so, where can they use AI as far as can they use it for all of it or just for different aspects, different pieces? So that needs to be very clear as well. The next one here deals with reflection, the R, R reflection for critical analysis of feedback. So the idea here would be that you know, whatever assessment you're currently using, they would do that and then they would get feedback from you and now they have to reflect on that feedback. So they would write in whether they agree with the feedback, whether they don't, and then more specifically why. So now they're doing sort of a critical analysis of the feedback that was received from you. By doing this, it helps them to reflect, which is always good in the experiential learning cycle. So they're reflecting on the process, on the assignment, on the feedback, and then deciding what they thought. Do they understand why that certain feedback was given? What did they learn from this process? Again, a great opportunity to, to really critically think about the project, the, the assignment, and then reflect uh, on that uh, experience. The final one here deals with expanding the assignment into multiple pieces. So here we're really looking at the assignment and then thinking, okay, is, is that assignment, is that done in such a way, the process of this assignment, is it done in such a way that is right now no longer adequate because of the fact that we have AI. I'll give you a prime example would be, I give a, uh, you know, a series of presentations dealing with a topic and then I say, okay, now you have two weeks to write an essay about something associated with this topic. The problem here is if we wait two weeks and then get that final product, we're missing out on what's going on in between. So what can be done is we can break that type of assignment up into different portions. So in writing, typically we have the seven step writing process. So this is where we break up that writing into different types of pieces such as, well, we have brainstorming, we have you know selecting the topic, we have uh, outlining, we have rough draft, we have proofreading, all these different parts that go in there. A lot of that could be done in class. So now that negates the use of AI. A lot of it could incorporate AI, but again, you would be very specific in allowing them and telling them, okay, you can use AI for this, but not for this. You could also do other things like you could specifically require a rough draft. So now before that final product, now you have an opportunity to give them feedback. And then you could say, okay, now I see this rough draft. I want you to use track changes so that I can see your actual progress so I can help to verify that you're actually going through and, and adjusting and addressing the specific feedback for each part of this. So that's a technique as well. Uh, another one that I recommend would be having some sort of student, student uh, event where you're doing uh, peer evaluation, peer observation. So that means that the student would bring in their write-up, their essay, and then now they have to give it to someone else and then the other person uh, observes theirs, so they go through and then give them feedback as well. I definitely recommend that you have a worksheet that goes along with that. And the worksheet is basically sort of your rubric, but put into a worksheet form like a checklist so that the students know, okay, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to be sure that it has these aspects within the essay. That makes it a bit more structured. The purpose for that is now they're getting exposed to another student, another student is being exposed to their content and they're learning from each other as far as the process is concerned. Additionally, they have to start to learn what right looks like, right? Which is a great thing because now that helps them in their own process as well. It also exposes them to the content of that rubric one more time, even though it's in worksheet form, but still they're seeing, okay, these are the specific things that are important for this good final product. So that helps them in their developmental process as well. So I definitely recommend that. Um, again, 
making sure that they have uh, an understanding of what's expected of them, where they can use AI, where they can't. And again, the big part about this is also that a lot of this can be done in class to help ensure that AI isn't being used unless you want it to be used. So there it is, the whole share technique in order to help address how we can go through and redesign our assignments and assessments. Now, when we're going through all of this, it's always important to think about where can I put in some aspects of AI literacy. That's a big thing that I'm always pushing that we need to really de develop, not just within ourselves, but within our students. We need to prepare them for the world that exists now, which is highly inclusive of AI. So the students will need to learn how to use AI. They'll need to be using that in their workplace. So we need to prepare them whenever possible, not to the point where it negates what they're, we're trying to teach them so that they can learn the actual content, but an incorporation of AI when it's logical, when you decide that it makes sense, should really be looked at and thought about. So AI literacy integration, whenever you can, would be great. There it is. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to reach out to me. But this share technique uh, is just put together to help address uh, what we need to do to make our assignments that much better in the age of AI. You don't have to do every single one of these. You're making the choices, you're making the decisions as far as what would be best to make this assignment better to work with AI, but not to the point where a student can just use AI for everything. We want some integration where logical, but then we also want them to actually engage in the actual content. That's it. Thank you very much. And remember, learning is for life. Mm -hmm.